today. From Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the National Football League. see Derek Carr and the Las Vegas Raiders taking on Marcus Mariota and the Atlanta Falcons. Well, there's never a shortage of shows or sights and sounds throughout this city, but for the next few hours, all eyes are glued to Allegiant Stadium here in Las Vegas. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Atlanta Falcons and the Las Vegas Raiders. Vegas. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And they'll be led out by Marcus Mariota, former second overall pick back in 2015, now in his eighth season in the league. Coming out of Oregon as the Heisman Trophy winner, we thought that this guy was headed towards superstardom, and while he didn't quite reach those heights, he did have some flashes along the way. And right now, his athleticism continues to keep him in the league. Still has a good arm. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And the Raiders pick it up inside the 20. And he's into the end zone. It's a fumble return for six and a Raider touchdown. Huge, huge play by the defense, not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? But I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So for the second time in this one we get set to see the Falcons offense. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it, but you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it, and that's what you don't want to do. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Coming up on a second and six. Opening carry of the game for Cordero Patterson. 
And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A big run there, 29 yards and a first. Dance class, anyone? <laughs> Did you see the steps between the quarterback and the running That's back you on need that counter for a good play? counter. You have to have it because you're setting up your blocking. There's a timing element as well, but they have to marry up their steps. Otherwise, that timing gets thrown out the window. Timing was great there and a big run. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 43. On first down, going back to Patterson. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync. And the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Here's second and five now from the 37th. On second down, a run with Patterson. And he'll take this one down to the 36. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Third and short yardage, Mariota rolling to his left. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger and bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker, and this early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, Mariota. And his throw's going to be incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Tossing out right here to Patterson. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Now Mariota. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. They'll give him four yards there, and that's going to make it fourth down. Let's just make this one simple. Could he be any more open than he was on that play? Yeah, they lost him going to the outside. Hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap. Who's got who, what, what defense you're in. That was totally a blown coverage. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The putter pinion now to kick this one away. Taken at the goal line. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. And the holding penalty sets him back inside the 20 as they get going on this drive. Car now on first down. He finds Bolden. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. 
And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, backdoored them, and that time worked well for a solid game. Carr with a play fake to Jacobs. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Carr. His throw incomplete. The target there, Mac Hollins. But it'll be second down. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. On second and 10, Carr. Catch is made by Hunter Renfro. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. A Raider first down, Carter Renfro. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. First rep of the game for Josh Jacobs. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. But they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Carr going to throw. Got a man open. It's Darren Waller. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. They've got another first down. The Raider passing game clicking on all cylinders right now. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Now Carr delivering another one here to Darren Waller. He's got it again. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. On first and 10, here's Carr. He'll find his tight end. That's Waller. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And a top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him. And I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. You have to throw a number of coverages at him, make him think as he's running downfield, and hope you can create a little bit of havoc. And he is in. Touchdown, Raiders. Josh Jacobs, a 10-yard touchdown run as his guys are able to extend their lead. He finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three downs, stay on the field, run it and catch it, and he gets it done. Carl 
Carlson on for the PAT. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A 10-play drive that time. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Josh Jacobs. Touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. This fielded right at the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Here comes the Atlanta offense now, ready to take over here. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. They'll give it to Patterson. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now Mariota. That'll be taken in by Demir Bird. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yes. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. First and ten, it's Patterson. Uh, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Uh, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. On second and a yard, Mariota, throw left side complete. That's Patterson, and he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Nate Hobbs there to bring him down. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. They'll go again with Patterson. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. This will be the eighth play of the drive here, third and four. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. Open man there is Patterson complete. 
And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 20-yard line. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Forced out to his left. And all the way to the two-yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. Brandon, there was more on his mind there than just getting to the first down marker. Saw an opportunity to get a big play and was going to let the defense do a lot to stop him from getting there. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Mariota now. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Denzel Perryman. And the Raiders are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. The turnovers, obviously, Charles, always costly. But, oh man, when you throw those interceptions in the end zone like that, it really stings. He tried to fit that one into his tight end. And I often use the expression NFL open, which means a tighter window. Down near the goal line, you really want him to be open. In this case, it cost him. On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. On second and seven, Carr. The left side throw complete to Adams. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And now we've got a third down and three. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. First down, Raiders, Carter Waller. Third and four, he did just enough. And I mean just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. On first down, Carr. Over the middle, it's complete. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Again, it's Carr. That's complete to his tight end, Waller. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, but when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. Now Carr on the bootleg. They swing that out wide to Jacobs. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. <laughs> 
Carr going to give it to Jacobs. Rashawn Evans out of Alabama had the tackle defensively. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Second and five now. Carr. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. That's good for 28 yards. You have to ask the question, what was the help? Because it's a little surprising to me that he'd find that much room to run this close to the end zone. He doesn't quite get there, but he sets his guys up with a first and goal. Try and power it home here with a fullback Johnson. And he's over the line and in for a Raider touchdown. Taking it in from four yards out as his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. Well, they weren't messing around. First and goal, they don't do anything fancy. They just go to the fullback right away. I like how you phrase that because oftentimes they come back to the fullback when it's late in the down and distance count, right? In this case, first down, let's go get it right now. And he got it six points on the board. Carlson now to add the extra point. From out of his end zone, it's Avery Williams. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result, and he opted for the touchback. Atlanta now coming out on the field. As the offense comes out here, Charles, remember they threw the interception last time out, but they were moving the football down the field. Looked like they were going to have a sustained drive that ended in points. But then the pick ensued. And because of that, there's no way you can call the last drive a success. Yes, there are things to build on because they found some play calls at work. Now they've got to build another drive and find a way to avoid the turnover the plague did on the last one. Twenty-one to three is your score after one. Second and six, just inside the thirty. To throw is Mariota, eluding the pressure right. Able to slither by, and he takes this up to the forty-yard line before being corralled. Mariota had an 87-yard run as a rookie. This one a bit less, but it is a first down. Evident there that he learned his lesson from the last drive. No way he was going to force a throw that time when nothing broke open, kept it, and ended up running for a first down himself. Mariota on first down. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. 
Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They have not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Another try after the first down sack. Mariota. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. No shortage of impressive moments from him thus far. Now he's halfway to the century mark, and we're still in the first half. There's been no answer for his running ability so far by the defense. I can't wait to see what adjustments they'll have to make during the halftime break. The offense on third down, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and eight to throw Mariota. And that is incomplete. Really good coverage all over the field. It took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Eight yards on the return following a punt of 41. And the Raiders will take over now first and 10. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. So for this offense, Charles, remember drive one made it to the end zone. Drive two resulted in a touchdown as well. Now they'll try to make it three for three. Yeah, and you know, they told us all week that this was the plan and this is what they wanted to execute. But did they really believe it would happen this well, this efficiently? I know they'll take it. And afterwards, they'll say, there was never a doubt in our minds we were going to be successful in this one. Nice run defense presented there. And what I mean by that is discipline. Guys filling the right gaps in the right holes, no one over pursuing and making a very nice play. On second and nine, Carr toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Carr now to throw. And Waller taking it in over the middle. And he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Man open is Keelan Cole complete. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Now, Carr again. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He certainly had a good game throwing the ball so far, but I think he was trying to take that from good to great with that throw, trying to get one downfield. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. 
Again, he'll drop to throw. He's going to find and complete it to Renfro. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. Here's Jacobs on first and ten. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Meanwhile, Carr's throw pulled in by Renfro. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 23. Give them 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Throwing on first down is Carr. And he'll find Moreau here. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. Looking to throw again on second down. Carr. Carr finding Walter there for the Vegas first. The tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. They scored touchdowns on drives one and two, and now they're trying to make it a perfect three for three to start. Again, they'll throw with Carr. And Bolden brings it in, complete. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. They go power. This is Johnson, the fullback. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. Call it a gain of a couple. The defense stiffening here. It's third and goal. Jacobs will cross the line. He's in. Touchdown, Raiders. So the second down run didn't work. They run it again on third down and get in. I wasn't sure if they might pass it, Charles. We know that they like to mix it up down here around the goal line. Yeah, almost felt like the offensive line said, forget mixing it up. Let's call our favorite running play over our best blockers, and let's get this one in. Carlson on for the PAT. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Josh Jacobs. Touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. Fielded just outside the goal line. 
And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. They bring out the Falcons offense once more. Cordero Patterson ready to go again at running back. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, Use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. On first and 10, here's Mariota. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. His running ability has been an extra dimension of their game plan thus far. For once, though, he doesn't create any magic against the front that's prepared for him to try and take off. Six yards left on second down. Give to Patterson running to the right. And some room to work. And a strong run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 35. A nice pickup there, 18 yards, first down Falcons. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Mariota to throw it. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Pitts. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Second and six. A right side run with Patterson. And he's got room. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage, and we're still in the second quarter. They'll run here with Algier. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Tyler Algier, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Falcons are able to cut into that deficit. Great call to hand that one off. And his running back did the rest. Someone read their keys correctly. And on the defensive side of the ball, they certainly did not because they really essentially were just going to swarm the quarterback. They kind of guessed themselves out of the play. And guess who benefited? The guy with the football. The try here for the extra point. And this is up and good. It cuts the lead to 28-10 now. A drive that time of six plays. And it was Tyler Algier capping things off with a touchdown. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This taken in at the goal line. 
And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. The Raider offense now making their way toward the huddle. Right now, everything they touch turns to gold. This is their fourth possession. Touchdowns on their first three possessions. I mean, this defense, they can't seem to stop them. It's like they're on skates. Great analogy, Brandon, because they are pushing them back and winning everything at the line of scrimmage. They've just been laying down tracks towards the opposite end zone. So to themselves, all they're saying is, if we don't make a mistake, there's no way they can stop us. The defense thought they had that play covered, but it still got driven backward by those blockers. Those types of plays are a key part of any team's offensive game plan. It all starts up front in the trenches. From the 27, Carr, a quick throw knocked away, it's incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. The Raiders on third down, a perfect four for four thus far. This will be third and six. Here's Carr. Over toward the sideline for Roller. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Short completion, just four yards. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. But well, looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. Avery Williams deep for Atlanta. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and it will be Falcon football. The do-it-all weapon, Cordero Patterson, coming back out. And Charles, you can't really fault him. He's over 100 yards already. He's not the reason they're losing. And that is really unusual because ordinarily, when you've set the tone this way and have run it this effectively, usually your team's in control. So it's a very strange situation. And you're right, you can't fault him. He's done a great job for his team thus far. I'm guessing he's saying, feed me on the sidelines. Now will they continue to do it? You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Throwing is Mariota. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. Kudos for the defense for me on that one because they were prepared the whole way for him to try to escape and hit them for more yardage running it. I like the way they stayed zeroed in on him and kept him contained when he pulled the ball down. I think he was fortunate to get what he did on that run. They'll run with Patterson. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. I haven't met a football team yet that runs the ball successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team, right? You gotta be able to put your nose in there, smell where the first down sticks are, and get there. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Mariota. Throw caught here by Bird. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. Throwing again on second down. Mariota. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. And attempted a deep ball there, and they didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit 
in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Mariota on third and two. And complete to Drake London. And he is going to have a Falcons first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Mariota. Zacchaeus here hauling it in. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. And they'll be in search of six yards here on third down. This is now the ninth play of the drive. Mariota again. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. Yeah, I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So that challenge, a successful one. Fourth down, Mariota. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Falcons go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Raider D, they get the football back. But well, it was too far for a field goal try. You don't really gain a whole lot out of a punt, so I don't think you have much of a problem with that, do you? No, not at all. I think it's the right play, the exact right play, because even if you want to play defense and pin them deep, you know how hard it is for a punter to, to knock one dead inside the 10-yard line. That's not, uh, uh, that's not necessarily easily done. So I think going for it there was the right call. Carr now on first down. The open man here, Renfro. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. To throw, it's Carr. And the reception made over the middle. This is Bolden. Now the Raiders are going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime.
Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. Carr. Throwing middle and it's complete. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Car to throw again. Looking middle, and that's complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 17-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Now the Raiders going to burn their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So Carr will depart, and on comes the Raider kicker, Daniel Carlson, for the field goal try. This will be a 34-yard attempt. The kick by Carlson is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So everything else has gone right in this first half. Kind of follows that it would for their kicker, too, as he adds three more onto the lead. Yeah, and the way that this one's gone, Definitely not looking like he's going to have to worry too much about pressure kicks late in the game. He can go out there free and easy, just work on his form, and he knocked that one through. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And he's going to lose yardage. Not that it matters as the final seconds tick away. So we have reached halftime here in Vegas with the Raiders on top. As we send you to our EA Studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one is maybe not exactly in the bag yet, but there is definitely a big mountain to climb in this third quarter. The teams are already back out there, so let's not waste any time as we'll turn it back over to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. with the lead already and they will get the football here as the second half is now underway fielded just outside the goal line and he brings us out past the 20 to the 24 the Raider offense ready to go here to start the third quarter Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 24. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. 
Only able to gain a couple there, and it's second down. Now Carr. Got a man. It's Darren Waller. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. This is just more of the same. This defense has had no answer on a lot of these throws. They've let these receivers run wild. And here's another completion for good yardage. So first and 10. And if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Here's Carr to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. Finally, a good play there defensively on the deep ball. The secondary has had its struggles this entire game. Offensively, they've had their way with them. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Carr. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. To me, the defense was looking a little gassed near the end of the first half, but they've come out of the locker room with a little extra spring in their step. Wonder what they did at halftime to get them so motivated. I don't know, but that sack looked good. Now let's see if they can build on the momentum of that play. Here's A.J. Cole now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a great job on special teams to down it, as this will be marked down inside the five-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. First and ten, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Back near his goal line, Mariota. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and the Raiders have recovered. All the practice, all the training, all the meetings. In this situation, I know exactly what quarterbacks are taught. Take care of the football. That's job one paramount, because you cough it up here, you might be giving up six points real easy. Tip of the cap to the defense, though, forcing the fumble. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Patterson running between the tackles. And he's going to be taken down shy of the 10 right around the 9-yard line. Two yards that time, a stark contrast from the big chunk on the previous play. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing Mariota. And this is going to be incomplete. We're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. 
Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. The first play of the drive there is incomplete. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Jacob's going to try the middle, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do, and right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try to make some plays in their backfield. From midfield, here's Carr. And finding Keelan Cole. And he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. scrimmage the 31 now on first and 10. Carr with a play fake to Jacobs. Under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Give the sack to Lorenzo Carter. He only gave them an instant to react. It was a classic case of if you blink you missed him. Off of the line and to the quarterback in just a couple of seconds. Running back only had a moment to react and attempt to throw a block. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. Now Carr. The left side throw complete to Adams. The result only four yards there on the play. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. From the gun, it's Carr. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the possession is theirs at their own 43-yard line. Well, that's a down and distance coaches always talk about trying to avoid, isn't it? I mean, that's third and long. And you just know they're pinning their ears back and coming after him, sometimes even with extra pressure. And he, he knew that. I mean, he, he knew they were coming. He just fumbled it. Yeah, he knew it. The offensive line knew it. Everyone did, yet the pressure was still there, and he ended up coughing it up. Very good starting field position for the Falcons offense as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. They're going to start to drive here on the ground with Patterson. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. 120 yards on the ground for him so far. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them? And do I have enough confidence to make a play? And that nearly intercepted. It's incomplete. Now remember, he had a pick earlier. He couldn't reel that one in. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Mariota now. 
Got his man. It's London. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. And right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Mariota. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. It'll go as a gain of four at its second down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football. Make and now another turnover as this one's intercepted. Picked off by Rocky Sin. And the Raiders will take over here just shy of the 30. Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores. But, yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception They've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10, just shy of the 30. He'll give it to Jacobs to start the drive, and he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. They'll give him credit for trying, but there's no fooling the defense with that call. They were reading run, and they set up to stop the run and then execute it. Now it's second and nine. Play action. Now it's Carr. And this one is incomplete. Well, so much for getting separation. No chance there. Locked down tight, forcing the incompletion on that attempt. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Carr now to throw. And Waller taking it in over the middle. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The pickup goes for 16 and a Raider first down. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. On first down, Carr. A quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. This is what defensive coaches ask of their defenders every single ball game. Get a hand on every throw in coverage. They want the deflections. They want the knockaways. Pick it yourself if you can, but at least knock it down and guarantee it's incomplete. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll look to throw again. Oh, looking for Waller, but this is intercepted. Isaiah Oliver with the INT. And the Falcons are going to take possession of the football. Their passing game has been spectacular this afternoon. Finally, a win for the defense. You think maybe there was an adjustment there. Finally gained a measure of, I don't even know if you call it revenge, but got a play done against him, and that's been difficult for them all game long. Here comes the Atlanta offense now, ready to take over here. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, 
it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game, and I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. From the 37, they work on second and six. Now Mariota. Looking left sideline, incomplete. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To throw is Mariota. Got this complete to the tight end Pitts. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's not the first time they've looked his way when they've needed a big play. He's been the go-to guy all game long. And they get the hook up again on third down to keep this drive alive. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Mariota. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked off by Jayon Brown. And the Raiders are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. Well, it certainly feels like this defensive group has figured this guy out to the tune of a big lead in this one. And you know that he's frustrated with how this game has gone. And now with back-to-back -back interceptions, he's got to find a way to get out of his own head and start making better plays. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at the 34. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked by Nick Kwiatkowski. And the Falcons are going to take possession of the football. Well, their defense got him the football with an interception. They trot out there, Charles, in the very first play. They give the football right back. <laughs> Brand, I almost expect you coming like an auctioneer. We've got two. We got two. Do I hear three? Remember, it was two in a row. Would we hit three in a row? Because these offenses, they've got to be a little bit more careful as they go forward. These defenders, they're locked in and really focused. Patterson, he'll try it up the middle. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. So that time they got the left guard with a hold. And let's face it, in today's ball, you might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. On second down, a run with Patterson. And some room to roam now. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. 140 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. He's done his part sailing past the century mark on the ground with rushing yardage, but his team, a different story. Yeah, they're down big in this ball game, so sometimes you wonder to yourself how much of that is him with a great performance and how much of that is the defense just loosening up because they have a big lead. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Mariota going to run the option right. Oh, good move. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. 
Well, I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. Algier is into the end zone. It's a Falcons touchdown. Well, fair to say they've got something here in this rookie running back, and he's in for the second time in the ball game. And Brandon, it's a position where there's often a lot of turnover, a lot of competition at that spot. But he's proven to them that he wants to be the bell cow guy that his franchise can rely on. for the extra point. And the lead will be cut down to 14. So that drive, four plays. And it was Tyler Algier capping things off with a touchdown. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. Their lead down from 21 to 14, but still sitting in a great spot, up two scores here in the third quarter. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 26. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Adams. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive and it's a quick first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two score lead in the third quarter they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Car now on first down. Caught out right by Renfro. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Throwing now is Carr. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Carr going to throw. He hits Adams complete. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 39 yards there, a big one. I'm seeing a lot of guys shaking their heads on defense right now, particularly in the secondary. And when you see that going on, that is never a good sign. But it's understandable. They've been shredded so far. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Into the red zone, it's Carr. And he's gonna be intercepted a third time. 
picked by Nick Kwiatkowski. And the Falcons force the turnover. And they'll take over at the 10. So a potential momentum shifter there, working with a two-score lead third quarter. But that, not the smartest of throws. I would agree with you on that one because this game is still very much in the balance. It felt pretty one-sided to this point. But now, if these guys can turn this turnover into points, things could start getting a little more interesting. First and 10 now for the Falcons and Mariota from back at their own 10-yard line. And they'll start out here with a jet sweep. And strong running there gets this up over the 15-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. And when you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense that's really kind of geared to stop that play, your confidence has to rise, and now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. From the 16, Mariota. He's got his tight end, Anthony Ferkser. First target, first catch, and a first down. Working out of the gun, Mariota into the hands of London. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 15 yards, first down Atlanta. From the gun, Mariota. He'll get this into the hands of Bird. And they'll get this down to the 42 yard line. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 42-yard line. Play action now, Mariota. And oh, it coughed it up, and the Raiders pick it up. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. And that play just looked a little helter-skelter from the start. That's the risk as a quarterback. Once you take off with that football, you might fumble it, and he did. And he was going for the reward, which is gaining yardage, breaking down a defense, but you're right about the risk. Always lurking out there, someone always trying to get to the football, try to find a place to cover up and slide and protect what you've earned. A good starting spot for the Raiders as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. So after the fumble recovery, it's Carr. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Falcon defense has a touchdown. Well, don't change that channel just yet. This one may have gotten a bit more interesting. Put down the remote, put down the clicker. This one looked like it was over. It looked like they were ready to seal the deal. But in doing so, by pitching it around a little bit, it cost them. We could have a great finish. Crew able to connect on the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. 
taking it about the one. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. And now this fourth quarter becoming very interesting. That pick six makes this a one-score game. Still plenty of time on the clock. We'll see how aggressive they choose to be. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now a first carry for Brandon Bolden. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. And down he goes. A coverage sack. Took too long to get rid of it. And that's Grady Jarrett who forced his way through to register the sack. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen. But somehow, they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead. And thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. So now Carr and the Raiders dealt a third and long after that sack. He'll look to throw. That's caught by Waller out left side. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Atlanta regains possession of the football. Right now, they're on the wrong end of the scoreboard, and that won't change if this drive ends like the last one when they had that lost fumble. So you have a feeling taking care of the football is certainly paramount right now. Yeah, and it's not just the guy who dropped it on the last drive, is it? That means everyone who might touch the ball is getting the same message. Guys, ball security, paramount. Let's take care of it, and if we do, we've got a chance to put points on the board. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. And they've got to go thank the guys on D. Four yards remain for second down. Mariota to throw it. Complete to Zacchaeus. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. First and 10, it's Patterson. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. from just shy of midfield. Mariota, and he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage.
The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Mariota. Zacchaeus here hauling it in. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on it. Really well done. Back to the ground now. Patterson. Oh, no, he lost the football. And that will get out of bounds. Lucky there. They keep possession inside the five. Thankfully for the offense, a fortuitous bounce there on the fumble goes out of bounds because they're down here in the red zone. You don't want to lose one there. You don't want to lose one. And the best part, because it went out of bounds, they retain possession, still have an opportunity to put points on the board. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. On first and 10, it's Algier. And he will take it in for a Falcon touchdown. Tyler Algier taking it in from four yards out. And the Falcons are an extra point away from tying this game here on the fourth. And we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Now Young Way Koo for the extra point. tied here in the fourth quarter. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was Tyler Algier capping things off with a touchdown. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. Taken in at the three. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. And a short pickup to about the 27. It'll be second down. Not a lot of running room there. Not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Carr. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing into coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. The Raiders on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This is third and seven. Here's Carr. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. 
His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Here's A.J. Cole now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. So possession goes over here on the punt, and out will come the offense as they take over. And here now come the Falcons. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Mariota on first down. That'll be caught downfield by Bird. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. They'll give it to Patterson. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. The run defense, they have been porous at times today, but not that last go around. No, they really tightened it up, didn't they? They finally got themselves a win because all game long we've seen them get gashed. This time they played their responsibilities, played their keys, and made a nice stop. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Mariota. And his throw is incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Throwing is Mariota. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be fourth down. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Throwing on first down is Carr. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Well, that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. He'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Jacobs. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A gain of 28 yards there and give him a first down. The key here, as it usually is, protection. Love the design of this one because they leaked the running back out and sent him down the field. But you've got to give a quarterback time to locate him. They did for a nice play. And now following that last play, I do believe we're going to get a review here. Yes, indeed, the red flag is out. Did he keep the 
those feet in bounds. That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the decision to challenge does not pan out, and that's also going to cost him a timeout. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. To throw his car. Catch made, it's Moreau. Nothing at all on that one. It'll be second down. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. Now a play fake. Carr. And that's off the mark, incomplete. And now offensively, it's third and ten, and I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. Now, Carr again. Throw right side, going to be caught by Waller. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 42. 12 yards on third down as the drive rolls on. Charles, he's now over 400 yards passing in this one. It feels like he has a zillion completions. Just a very memorable effort from a guy that we thought could be in line for a big game, and he has exceeded our expectations. That he has, and I'm not really surprised at all because when you look at this offensive unit, they are loaded across the board. And, of course, the guy throwing them, he's a big-time player himself. They brought it from start to finish and really helped get the better of the opposing secondary. Here's Bolden. And down inside the 35, he goes to the 32-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. On play action, it's Carr. They swing that out wide to Jacobs. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do, and that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup if someone's trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're gonna win those, too. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. I know it was a game, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Casey Hayward. And the Falcons are going to take possession here at their own 16-yard line. Well, they were in a great position to take the lead, Charles. Obviously, all they needed was a field goal to do that. They wanted the touchdown. Unfortunately, they're going to get neither. And you know every offense talks about the same thing each week, don't they, Brandon? They want to end every drive with a kick, whether it's a field goal attempt, a point after the touchdown, or at worst, a punt. This time they had that opportunity but didn't get it because you know the field shrinks that close to the end zone, and that allows a defense to tighten up their coverage, and they pick that one off. Now Patterson to start the drive. Pass the 20 for a short gain, second down. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game 
or he can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They'll go again with Patterson. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. This offense so far on third down. Well, they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This is third and eight from the shotgun. It's Mariota. Mariota so nimble, sliding to the ground with a first down. Right about 20 yards on the pickup. Well, officially, they'll say it's going to go for 19. From here on, any score could be the winning one, and he is certainly aware of that. Look at the way he locked in on that marker and made a mad scramble to get to it for the first down. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Give to Patterson running to the right. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. 186 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 43. They'll try to throw now, Mariota. And he can't get rid of it, he's taken down. In that time for the sack, say hello to Chandler Jones. That time, finally, a measure of revenge as they get him down behind the line. It almost felt like relief, didn't it? Because with the success he's had throughout this game, You'd almost expect him to get free and pick up 10 to 15 every time he takes off. Not in that case. That has to feel good for the defense. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Another try after the first down sack. Mariota. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. For some important yardage on third down. From here, it would be a 60-yard boot. Mariota now. Throw left side, complete to Bird. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Certainly some pressure here on Young Way Koo. This for the lead in the final stages. And this is good. It was running out of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. 
So the defense able to force the interception and the offense working their way into field goal range and able to get three out of it. Yeah, and give them credit for that. They took the ball, maneuvered it downfield, and while they couldn't get exactly what they wanted, which was a touchdown, they did get three points out of it. So they paid off what the defense gave them. Both sides to be thrilled with that. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Here's Abdullah from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So Carr and the Raiders now down 34-31, just over two minutes to go. They'll have one play here just north of the two-minute warning. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Connecting with Renfro. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Less than two to play with just a field goal separating these two sides. So it's Raider football as we get you reset. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Carr. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Here's Carr. He's going to find and complete it to Renfro. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. his car able to find Walter that's complete and he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion partner they're clearly saving those timeouts but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position first down now but that clock rolling car Working the middle here. That's complete to Moreau, the tight end. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. The Raiders try to move quickly, try to get everybody back to the line. Car to throw. He finds his man, complete. That's Jacobs. So he stopped for no gain, and that'll bring up second down. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Here's second and ten. <laughs> to throw his car. And that's intercepted yet again, and that could be the backbreaker. And the Falcons have just about sewn up this football game. Well, you knew you had to take some chances here with the clock winding down, needing a touchdown to win it. And that one might have just sealed their fate. Yeah, and that's the nature of the two-minute drill. The offense trying to go downfield and make their plays. But defenses, they're sitting back watching everything that they do, but not too far back. They want to be in position to make a play on the ball, and that they did. 
The Falcons offense set to go. They've got the lead by three, late stages of the game. What's the message here? Just hang on to the football? Is it that simple? That's exactly right, because ball security is paramount. And you got a small cushion. A field goal can tie you, but you don't even think that way. Just take care of the ball, close out the game. Will they close it out? We're about to find out. finish this one off to me that's the only thing they lost in the fourth quarter how about that comeback yeah trailed coming into the last frame got it done taking the knee an excellent come from behind victory Charles especially there in the fourth quarter both offense and defense were clicking they're going to feel good about this one boy are they ever because the deficit they faced certainly wasn't small they obviously did not give up on that one and in the end how about that come from behind victory they'll cherish this one for a while So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Las Vegas.